Good evening. How are you? Awesome wonder how great thou art. I have crossed the Jordan River to Canaan's, and this is how heaven will be like. The entrance of sin in the world permeated into every fiber of society. Thus, all cultures, all communities, all traditions, all practices, all races, all tribes, all nations, all families on planet Earth were invaded by this monster called sin. The plans of God for mankind were shattered as we have seen in the past lessons, and the universe was now under its new leader, Satan. Satan took God to task wanting him to explain how he was going to tackle the crisis. Two issues were brought out by Satan, the new leader. One, God, you are holy, and your law is holy. Man has sinned and must die, for the wages of sin is death. Two, God, you say you are love. And one of your laws says, Thou shalt not kill. You have to forgive them. So in other words, the accusation was saying, God proved that you are not only just, but you are also the justifier of those who have sinned against you. God began this process in Eden very remotely by clothing Adam and Eve with tunics of skin, meaning an animal was killed, and most likely a lamb, and the blood was shed in order to make reconciliation and also to cover man's nakedness. God started a process of proving that he is just and the justifier of all who come to him. Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 to 8, the word of God says, But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Our talk this evening is entitled, Where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we are what we are. We are here today, we are in this house today because of the Lamb. And now as we open your word, may the Holy Spirit guide us through to understand the importance of the question that Isaac raised and the answer you provided that God shall provide. Enable us to understand this concept as you are preparing us for your soon return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis 22, Abraham was called by God to demonstrate how God is just and how God is the justifier of the sinner. Among human beings, None has been given a test like the one Abraham was given. Verse 2 says, Genesis 22, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, 
and they go to the land of Moria. And they offer him there a sack band offering. God is giving Abraham a very strange command. A command that Abraham never expected. The Lord is saying, take now. Your only son, whom you love, go to the land of Moria. Offer him an abundant offering. So, this strange command, how is Abraham going to respond? Verse 3. He rose early in the morning. He started his donkey. He took two of his young men with him. He took Isaac, his only son. He split the good for the burnt offering. He went to the place God had told him. Verse 9. He built an altar there. He placed the good in order. He bound his only child, his only son. He laid him on the altar. He stretched out his hand. He took the knife to slay his son. Verse 10. Here Abraham showed strange obedience to God's command. Dear people of God, can you imagine this? This son, they have given him, they have given birth to him. Abraham, 100 years old, Sarah, 90 years old, the only son, he is instructed to go and offer him as a burnt offering. If people of God, for those whom God has blessed, and you have children, and they are girls, you are running around, God who will bury me, I need a boy who will bury me. I have never seen a human being who has died and has never been buried because he didn't have a boy. I have never seen Some begin challenging God. You have given boy, boys God. I need a girl. I have never seen anybody who does not have a girl having an issue. So come to this situation. The only son at 100 years, at 90 years. Strangely, this man, Abraham, he obeys God. Strangely. Truly, temptations have mauled us human beings, but this one stands out unique and was handled in a unique manner. Not by angels, but by a fellow human being like us, Father Abraham. The command was not obeyed as easily as that. The servant of the Lord says, there was great agony in the heart of the patriarch. Truly, there was great agony. What was the agony? Must I tell Sarah about the strange command? What if she gives an alternative and hinder him from fulfilling God's command? Because earlier, Sarah had given an alternative. I am old, I cannot get a child. So, Muse, you have to get God right. He didn't mean me. He meant Hagar. So Abraham was saying, if I reveal the same to her, she may also suggest, it is not the son, it is a calf. Why? Isaac was her joy and her pride. Her life was bound up in him, and the mother's love might refuse the sacrifice. Amidst all this excruciating agony, Abraham did not murmur against God but he strengthened his soul by dwelling upon the evidence of the Lord's goodness and fullness. As the journey was to take three days, when the night came, his son and the young man could be sleeping. But Abraham spent the night in prayer, hoping some heavenly messenger might be sent to him to say the trial was enough, that the youth might return unharmed to his mother, but no relief came to his tortured soul. It was not an easy experience. Patrick and the Proverbs, page 151. It was not an easy experience. So the three days are over. 
The day has come, the D day. Isaac comes up with a hard running question. Genesis 22, 7 and 8. The worst and the darkest moment came upon Abraham's heart. The young man who seemingly was silently wondering the kind of sacrifice to be offered without all the needed facilities came up with a question that like a poison the arrow went into the deepest part of this man's heart. Young man comes up, daddy, that time he said, my father, daddy, and they said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire we have, the good we have, the knife you have, but where is the lamp for a burnt offering? He was used Every time they were going for prayer, there was a lamb for a burnt offering. Now that he is saying, we are going to offer a burnt offering, and he is wondering, where is the lamb? Servant of the Lord continues to say, The endearing words, my father, pierced Abraham's heart, but he was not ready to tell him at this point. But he answered, my son, God would provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So at the appointed place, people of God, they built an altar and laid the wood on it. Then with a trembling voice, Abraham unfolded to his son the divine message. With amazement and terror, Isaac learned of his fate. But he offered no resistance. Isaac could have escaped his doom had he chosen to do because he was strong. But he had been trained from childhood to ready, trusting obedience and as the purpose of God was opened before him, he yielded a willing submission. And by the way, dear parents here, I have had a few statements here and there as we are in the groups, family groups. There is one thing we are not addressing at all. How have we brought up these children? We are not addressing it. We are only addressing the consequences. This young man could have escaped, but he had been trained from childhood, trusting obedience, and as the purpose of God was opened before him, he yielded the willing submission. He was a sharer in Abraham's faith. And they felt that he was honored in being called to give his life as an offering to God. Who will ever feel like that today? And now the last words of love are spoken. The last tears are shed. The last embrace is given. The father lifts the knife to slay his son. When suddenly as the hand is up, coming down, his arm is stayed. Genesis 22, 11 to 12, the Bible says, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And they said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, you are only son from me. Dear people of God, if we fear to give an offering in money, how shall we give a human being? If we run away, when God says, give me what I have given you, we run away. What of a child? What of a human being? Abraham, at this point, he passed the test. So he turns and he sees the ram in the thicket and offers it instead of the son. A clear reverence to substitutionary uh, sacrifice. Servant of God says, the ram offered in the place of Isaac represented the son of God who was to be sacrificed in our stead. When man was doomed to death by transgression of the law of God, the father, looking upon his son, said to the sinner, leave, I have found a ransom. Patrick's and the Proverbs, page 154. 
that ram which offered in place of Isaac represented the son of God who was to be sacrificed in our state. When man was doomed to death by transgression of the law of God, the father looking upon his son said that is God the father looking upon Jesus Christ when he saw that Jesus Christ is going to give a sacrifice to redeem man in another way, God was turning to man and saying, man, my son, my daughter, now leave. Why a sacrifice has been found? In order for God to demonstrate that he's just, Christ who was sacrificed in our stead must prove obedience to the law of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26 and, 20, 26 and 7 says, For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, and divine, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. 27. Who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's? For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Verse 24 of the same chapter 7. But he, because he continues forever, he has unchangeable priesthood. Then 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, the word of God says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. In those days, when Africa was fighting for independence, and uh, we know in Africa, Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana became the first black president on the other side. We had others like Hastings Kamsu Banda of Malawi. We had uh, the late Mr. Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya, the late Kennedy Kaunda, of Zambia. We have the late Dr. Milton Obote of Uganda. All those fellows were called heroes of Africa and they were fighting for independence. And then there was this one, Dr. Julius Kambarage Nyerere. One time he spoke a statement in Kiswahili and they said, Uwezi kufanya kesi na fis, ikiwa hakimu ni fis na shahidi ni fis. In Kingereza, you cannot take a hyena to court if the judge is a hyena and the witness is a hyena. You can't win the case. What did he mean? The Europeans, the colonials, are the people who had cars. So when they were passing anywhere along the road and finding an African with his um, uh, tattered cows on the road, if there ever there is anything like that, the Mzugu could come out and begin beating the Africans, remove these dirty things from the road. The Mzungu was with another Mzungu in the car. So when the African could go to court and say, I was beaten unfairly, he is going before a judge who is a Mzungu. He is going to accuse a Mzungu, and the only witness who was there was a Mzungu. You can't win that case. Now, when the Bible is saying, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What did this message to us is people of God? When Satan accuses you that you have done this sin, you have done this thing, you are going to die. Tell him it's okay, I have done it, but let us go to court. In court where you are going, God the Father is the judge. Jesus Christ is the witness and is the advocate. Jesus Christ is our elder brother. Will Satan win the case? No. He won't win the case. So that is why John is writing and saying, my little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ is not only righteous, which God wants, because he needs righteousness, but he is holy. God needs holiness. He is harmless. He is undivided. He is separate from, from sinners, for he has been tempted in all points as to we are, but he never sinned. He positively kept the law of God in his humanity. This brings us to the point that he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And therefore, through Jesus Christ, God has proved that he is just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. For he pun God has punished the sin through his Son, Jesus Christ. Through the successful sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, Satan is complaints of whether God is just and at the same time loving on human beings have been answered fully and perfectly before the face of the entire universe and no more appeal through the eternal ages. Christ made the Lord's just demands against the sinful man by dying the death of the wages of sin on the cross. In accepting this provision made on behalf of sinful man in Jesus Christ, which is by faith, God for sure is now just in declaring you and me or I a sinful man, a sinful woman, God is now just to declare me righteous. So now, when something has happened and the wrath of God wants to be poured on me because God said his sin, the son stands and says, my father, my father, my father, my father, my blood, my blood, my blood. And the wrath of God subsides because Christ has taken your body, has taken my body, has obeyed on your behalf, has obeyed on my behalf, and God has no problem. In that way, when the devil comes up, he finds the case has already been settled. Therefore, you and I will be lost by choice and not because the solution has not been provided. In John chapter 1, verse 29, the Bible says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The preamble question of Isaac's question is very pertinent to every faculty of our lives as Christians today. Isaac was asking, My father, the fire we have, the wood we have, the knife we have, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? As a church, we post the best education system in the world. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? When we were doing, I think, education program here, when we were taught, one of the members asked the question, why are the Adventist schools very expensive? I was wondering why he was asking the question. When you look outside here, why are all of these cars very expensive and owned by members? Why? How is it possible to own a, an 8 million car and you can't afford 100,000 school fees in a year? The oil these cars drink, if ever they drink, the, 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 the petrol they drink, and everything. That was a by the way. But the question is, we post the best medical institutions in the world. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? We pose as a church the best publishing plants in the world. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? We pose as the best nutritional institutions in the world. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? We pose the best church organization system in the world. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? We post the best biblically oriented church in the world, but where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? The Lamb is missing. Why? Because Revelation 3, 15 and 16, the Bible says, I know your works, 
that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Why are we experiencing what we are seeing? Why is it that within the week the church is empty and on Sabbath people are going to borrow Nyayo Stadium for parking cars? Why? Because the Lamb of God is missing. We are neither hot nor cold. And God said, I don't need energy. Afadali, it's better you remain cold. That will be much better even if you are not going to be saved than to remain in the middle. Now for us, we are in the middle here. One leg is in the church, another leg is in the politics. Another leg is in corruption. You know, dear people of the world, people of God, the question is, where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in your life as an individual? You know. We post of a wonderful family, a renowned family, everywhere, but where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? You post of your respected status, reputation in society, but where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? One day, some two men were arguing. One who, who is who? There are people who are who? Others, those titles don't matter. So the who is who was asking the one who is not anything. Do you know who I am? And the one who is nothing answered, yes, I know. Who am I? He said, you are a soil. You know soil. Mchanga. <laughs> so, the who is who was confused. And this man who is nothing very quickly went to Genesis chapter 3, verses 19. And this is what he referred to man who asked him the question, do you know who I am? And then the man said, yes, I know who you are. And they said, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So the question, do you know who I am? You are dust. <laughs> that kind of arrogance, people of God, the question is, it doesn't matter. We pose of all those things, but the question is, where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? You post of being safe in technology, the internet, you know, the TV with the devil sponsored programs. But where is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? The Lamb is missing because, Revelation 3:17, the Bible says, Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and I do not know that you are wretched, miserable poor, blind, and naked. We don't know. You know, when we come here, people of God, the way we come on Kwai compound, this compound outside here, and we begin looking at this, the church like this, wondering, oh, this is where we worship. Many days back, many years, when houses were, when people started building iron sheet houses, you know, for those who are of those years, so, one man came to a neighbor's home. The neighbor had put up an iron sheet house. And this neighbor was asking, how much did it cost you to get these iron sheets? And this man began, I, will you really manage? I, will you manage, really? I, will you manage? He said that one until he didn't answer the man how much it cost because of pride and arrogance. Why so? The lamb of God is missing. The young man asked, Daddy, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Why are marriages breaking at alarming rates? Christian marriages, elders, Breaking with their wives, who are deaconesses, and all that. 
Why is it so? It is because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing. Why are the thefts and the murders committed on every hand? It's because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing. Why are men possessed of demons taking the lives of men, taking the lives of women and little children? It's because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing. Why are those who hold the reins of government not able to solve the problem of moral corruption, poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime? It is because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing. Why is the spiritual life stagnant? The Bible got us dust on the shelf. The prayer room has become the supper room because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing. In many of our homes, people of God, time comes for prayer. The TV is on. The child is watching cartoons. And the time for prayer comes saying, now um, put, switch off that TV. And the child says, no, 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 don't touch. And you hear mama saying, you know, pastor, that one, when he has said no, he has refused. So, we are not going to touch. Spiritual life has become stagnant. Because we no longer pray. We no longer read the word of God. Why so? The sin, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is making, missing. Why are we experiencing divisions in God's church based on tribe, based on race, based on nation, based on tongue, based on clan, based on status, clamoring of positions because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is missing? Why do we experience idolatry? Why do we experience hatred, jealousies, envy, adultery, disobedience, drunkenness, revelries, lewdness, sorcery, contentions, fornication, uncleanliness, outburst of wrath in the church of God? Because the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world is missing. Dear saints, the presence of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world when he is in our lives, when the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is in our lives, there is love. When the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is in our lives, there is joy. When the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is in our lives, there is peace and the peace that surpasses all understanding in our families. When the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is in our lives, there is kindness, there is goodness, there is faithfulness, there is gentleness, there is self-control, there is humility, there is forgiveness, there is reconciliation, there is restoration, there is life, abundant life, eternal life. Why? Because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world saves to the uttermost. The command of God to Abraham to go and give his only son a burnt offering instead of a lamb was the most painful experience ever witnessed by a human being. The heart-rending question by Isaac has already seen. The only begotten son whom Abraham knew was to be the lamb was another excruciating experience. Human beings for sure, as, as we observed, have gone through rough times in their spiritual journey, but this one of Abraham was one of its kind. By God providing a ram, that time was the greatest relief, the greatest joy, the greatest peace ever experienced by that faithful patriarch of God. Actually, in the Bible, is only Abraham who is called a friend of God three times in the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 7. Isaiah 41 verse 8 James 2, 2 chapter, chapter verse 23 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7 Isaiah 41 verse 8 James chapter 2 verses 23 The only one called a friend of God Whoever you are Whatever you are Wherever you are 
whatever you have, does the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world have a place in your life? For it's only through him and by him that when God is handling your case, he will prove to the devil that he is just and the justifier of all who have accepted the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. William MacDonald, in the song, I am coming to the cross, SDA Hymno 307 clearly brings the message home. I am coming to the cross. I am poor and weak and blind. I am counting all but draws. I shall full salvation find. I am trust in the Lord. Oh, thou Lamb of Calvary, I humbly ask thy cross I bow. Save me, Jesus, save me now. Stanza 4. Jesus, is the only gate pass into that eternal life. Isaiah chapter 26 and verses 2. The word of God says, Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. For this Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 verses 6. Where is the Lamb as we come to a close. Do we have any here and one of our brothers and one of our sisters who could say I wish this Lamb of God to hold my hand and walk with me along my life that you rise as we pray. If there is anyone saying my Lord, without the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, I have no life anywhere. And you will like say, Lord, I here stand. I call upon you to hold my poor hand, my feeble hand, and walk with me, Lord. And on that note, if there is one of our brothers or sisters who could wish to surrender his life or her life to Jesus Christ by way of baptism, you are welcome to see the elders and the pastors here as we do this closing prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you, gracious Father in heaven, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We are not worthy anything, Lord. We live a life of pride, arrogance, impunity, even in your church, Lord. We don't care. We say we have what we have. Even what we have that we have not gotten in the right way 
We bring you in, Lord, and say you have blessed us while it is the other way around. Forgive us, gracious Father in heaven. Allow us, Lord, touch our hearts that we may open so that Christ, as the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, you will have place in our hearts and then guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may walk humbly and the humility, allowing you, leading us, until we enter through those pearly gates which are ready to be opened for all of us who believe. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us. And we thank you for answering. We believe, Lord, in what you tell us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.